a bit, I'm going to show images of globoid cell lycodystrophy or Krebs disease, which is a lysosomal metabolic disorder with a lot of white matter involvement with a birth incidence of 1 in 300,000. Krebs disease usually presents at a very young age, a few months after birth. And you can see on the T2-weighted images of this four-month-old baby that there is high signal in the corticospinal tract, the dentate nuclei, and somatically in the brain stem on these T2-weighted images. And myelin is formed by the oligodendrocytes, but it doesn't stay the same once it is formed. The myelin is renewed, recycled and adjusted, so it's a very dynamic structure. And Krebs disease illustrates that the myelin in the corticospinal tract present at birth is already recycled and broken down a few months after birth. And you can see that the high signal of the corticospinal tract is higher than the unmyelinated white matter. And the myelin component that is not broken down correctly in Krebs disease is galactosylceramide or GALSUR. And if you take a closer look at the structure of myelin, in this drawing in a Schwann cell, you can see that the Schwann cell has formed myelin wrapped around the axon. The space between the myelin sheets is called an intraperiod line. And the myelin sheet consists of myelin basic protein centrally, phospholipids, and a lot of different proteins. And one of these proteins is GALSUR. And myelin is very stable once it is formed. It does not degrade spontaneously, as is illustrated in UTSI's nerve tissue. And UTSI is a natural mummy who lived more than 3,000 years before Christ in the Alps. And he was found in the ice. And there was a lot of research done with his body. They found he was lactose intolerant and they labeled his nerves with anti gal sur and you can see that his myelin was still intact after 5000 years so that's impressive so if you want to break down myelin you need a lot of proteins and enzymes to break down all of these components and the gal sur isn't broken down correctly in Krebs disease because the enzyme galactocerebrosidase is missing and you get accumulation of GALSUR in the oligodendrocytes and of another protein called psychosine and the psychosine is toxic for the oligodendrocytes and also for Schwann cells. There is a lot of myelin debris and there are inflammatory cytokines so it's also harmful for the microglial cells and macrophages and microglial cells and macrophages with a lot of GALSUR stored in it are called globoid cells which explains the alternative name for Krebs disease. So in Krebs disease there is white matter involvement because of the oligodendrocyte problem and of the peripheral nerves because of the Schwann cell problem. So you might see enhancement of the cauda equina and thickening of the equina fibers in this four-year-old girl and enhancement and thickening of the cranial nerves. So this is the uh, fifth cranial nerve. You can see it's thickened and it enhances. There might also be optic nerve involvement or involvement of the brachial plexus. There's 
involvement of gray matter structures. There might be a low T2 signal in the telemi. And in this review article, unfortunately, were no images. So I found this article, which is not as old as Utsi, where you can see that on CT there are faint calcifications in the telemi and symmetrically in the brainstem. And Krebs disease is one of the few diseases where the CT findings might precede the MR abnormalities. So in doubt, do a CT. The minority of cases with Krebs presents in adulthood. This patient was 60 when he presented, and this is the MRI nine years later. And you might even think of it as a neurodegenerative disease in cases like that. And besides corticospinal tract involvement, you can also see parietal occipital involvement in adult Krebs disease. And there are very nice schemes that can help you differentiate between acquired and genetic causes of white matter abnormalities in adults. In the differential diagnosis of Krebs are the other lycodystrophies, especially the metachromatic lycodystrophy. Krebs can have a thyroid pattern like metachromatic lycodystrophy because of sparing of the perivascular white matter. If you have an infant of a few months, you might also consider hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. In the elderly patients, you can think of the neurodegenerative diseases. And when there is thickening of the optic nerve, neurofibromatosis, optic neuritis can be a differential diagnosis option. And if it's the coda equina, you can think of Guillain-Barré syndrome. And before we